Welcome back to another Mech Deck Tech. Today we have another custom build for you featuring Mono White Angels led by Giada Font of Hope. We're looking to swarm the field with some angels and hit our opponents hard and fast before they have a chance to swing back at us. Before we dive on in, I noticed that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and click that subscribe button and ring the bell to ensure that you never miss an episode. You might even earn yourself a little shout out in one of our future videos, like Ophion is getting today. Ophion, you rock! Uh, so we're going to go over some key pieces in the deck, including our ramp slash cost reduction, a little bit of card draw, a little bit of life gain, ways to protect our, you know, important angels from all those nasty field wipes, as well as a few alternate win cons. Starting off our ramp slash cost reduction, we actually have our commander who could tap for white mana that could only be spent on angels, but considering we have 28 angels in the deck, we're guaranteed to pretty much get her out on turn two. I think she's a strong piece of ramp to get us ahead of our opponents and has the added benefit of powering up the angels that follow her. Of course, what angel deck would be complete without the Starnheim Aspirants? Uh, she's going to reduce the cost of all of her angels by two generic mana. And with some of them costing up to eight mana naturally, this cost reduction is going to go a long way. And cost reduction effects like this compared to mana ramp really scale the more spells you're casting per turn. So, super strong. Jumping down into our artifacts, we're running Oketra's Monument, which is going to offer up more cost reduction and offer up some warriors, which might get in for his chip damage, but more likely... They're really just here as chump blockers. Pearl Medallion is going to reduce the cost of all of our spells, not just our creatures. Soul Ring is the only true mana rock in the deck, but as a mana positive mana rock, we're happy to see it. Last up is Wayfarer's Bobble, which is a cheap way to grab an extra land and thin out the deck in the process. With only six pieces of ramp in the deck, we're going to move on to card draw. We're looking to keep our hand full of angels, and these cards are going to help us get there. Starting off, we have War Room, which is going to let us pay three mana for if you include the loss of mana from not being able to tap War Room itself, and pay a single life to draw a card. Following up that land, we have another with Minas Tirith, which is slightly cheaper, though we do have to attack, you know, with at least two creatures in order to do this. But we're in a pretty fairly aggressive deck, so I don't think that we're going to have much trouble doing that. Folk Hero is up next, and although it will only trigger once per turn, we should consistently see a trigger on each of the turns that it's out. Court of Grace follows up that background and introduces Monarch to the game. We're guaranteed to draw off Monarch at least the one time the turn that comes out. Both the evasion that flying gives us and the fact that many of our angels are not only powerful but also vigilant. We should be able to hold on to that Monarch title for quite a while. Mitra's Bobble is here as a free card draw and a sneak at what an opponent's about to draw. Two Arms is pulling double duty, allowing us to untap all of our creatures and drawing us a card in the process. Revitalize is also pulling double duty, grabbing us a little bit of life and drawing us an extra card. Sanctuary Warden pulls us back into the repeatable card draw. Uh, allowing us to remove either the shield counters that they enter with, but more likely we're going to just remove, you know, some plus one, plus one counters from things. Um, this is going to let us draw cards when they ETB, as well as when they attack. Archivist of Ogma rewards us with life gain and card draw whenever an opponent goes to search through their deck. Those nine pieces of card draw, many of which are repeatable, should let us keep the pressure on our opponents and dig for other key cards in the deck. With that being said, we're moving on to Life Gain City. So we're looking for effects that gain us life, care about, you know, our life total, uh, modify the way in which we're gaining life. Uh, we will be excluding anything that just has lifelink. A lot of angels happen to have lifelink, but that's kind of all they have going for them in addition to their flying. And it's just not all that interesting. Starting off that list, we have Angel of Vitality, which is going to gain us one extra life, whatever we would normally just gain life. And gets plus two, plus two, as long as we have 25 life or more. If we play them on turn three, right after our commander, they're going to come out as a 5-5 five, five flyer for three mana, which is pretty strong. Angelic Skirmisher can give all of our creatures lifelink or you know, one of two other abilities each combat, making them nice and versatile. 
Archangel of Thune has lifelink and allows us to beef up all of our creatures with plus one plus one counters each time we gain life. Bishop of Wings is going to let us gain four life each time an angel ETBs. Where Glorious Enforcer is going to have double strike as long as we have more life than an opponent. Gold Knight Redeemer is going to gain us two life for each other creature we control when they ETB. Lyra Dawnbringer pumps up all of our angels and passes out lifelink to boot. Resolute Archangel can take our life from as low as 1, bow all the way back up to 40. Oh, you thought you actually... you actually did something there. No, no, no. We still have 40 life. Resplendent Angel cares about us gaining at least 5 life per turn and rewards us with an angel for doing so. We can also pump them up to offer that life link to them and guarantee that we're going to gain that 5 life. They're actually a really nasty combo with our Commander, plus Righteous Valkyrie. Uh, so turn 4, you know, we have 9-9 nine, nine or something stupid. It's, it's real gross. It's real gross. Speaking of which, <laughs> Righteous Valkyrie, right? Um, they're an all-star in this deck. Every time an, e eh. Every time an Angel ETBs, we're going to... Uh, you know, gain some life, and we're going to quickly get that plus two, plus two for all of our creatures. Sarah's Avatar has power and toughness equal to our life total. Uh, you know, we're going to pretty quickly, like I said, kind of jump up, assuming we have Righteous Valkyrie early, but we have a lot of life gain in the deck. So we're almost always going to be above 40, and even if we were only sitting at 40, a 7 cost 40-40? Uh, yes, please. Bond of Discipline taps all of our opponent's creatures and gives all of ours lifelink until end of turn. The Book of Exalted Deeds rewards us with an angel for having gained at least 3 life, and could allow us to really give one of our angels an Enlightened Tutor to avoid losing the game. Uh, this is really important if there's like a clock kind of like on the board from like an opponent playing Approach of the Second Sun, or like they just have a combo going for the next turn. Johnny's Welcome is just going to gain us a single life every time a creature ETBs for us. Angelic Accord is another one of those cards looking for us to say, hey, how much life did you gain? Oh, is it at least four? Have an angel. Angelic Chorus is like, hey, did a creature ETB under your control? Go ahead and gain some life equal to its toughness. Cleric Class is gaining us extra life whenever we would normally just gain life. We're going to pass out extra power when we do gain that life. We'll eventually recur a creature and gain some life in the process of doing so. Last up in Life Gain City is Seraph Sanctuary, which is going to gain us one life each time an Angel ETBs. With 18 pieces of life gain in the deck, plus some other life linkers that we didn't really go over, our life total should be pretty high, stopping our opponents from winning via combat. So now we have a field full of Angels, and our opponents are looking for their board wipes. We definitely need a way to protect them, and to do so we have Unbreakable Formation, Teferi's Protection, and Rootborn Defenses, all of which either make all of our creatures indestructible, or just have all of our things phase out. Seraph's Skyblade offers all of our other angels indestructible, but of course we're running Avacyn Angel of Hope, for the same reason that they are naturally indestructible themselves. You know, our, our board is being locked down and protected from all those nasty would-be board wipes. Last up, we have some alternate win cons for ourselves. Starting off, we have the Angel of Destiny, a flying double striker, whenever any of our creatures deal combat damage to a player. We and that player gain that much life. This basically negates the damage that our opponents would take. Uh, but we're really here for that life gain for ourselves, and more importantly, the fact that once our life is at least 15 higher than our starting, it'll be there pretty quick. Um, we don't even have to connect with Angel of Destiny. We just had to attack. Uh, so yeah, they will just lose. Our other alternate win con is Approach of the Second Sun. Both of these really put the game on a clock. Angel of Destiny being a little quicker, right? It takes three turns overall to kind of connect, connect, connect. Victory is ours. Approach of the Second Sun 
could theoretically be done in like two or three turns. You know, it really just depends on how much card draw we have on hand. Guys, that's the deck. Uh, there are some other alternate win cons we could have put in that care about life. Uh, also, just like other cards that gain us life and let us sling our life around as damage. I have those cards in other decks. Uh, and I just don't really like repeating myself too, too much when I go to build new decks. In other news, we finally got a camera mount for the ceiling. So we're, you know, fingers crossed, going to get that installed soon. Record some gameplay footage that I know you're all itching to see. You know, you want to see Nick come back from the brink. You want to see Bates get annihilated. You want to see me pop off hard as fuck. <laughs> um, but in the meantime, I might try and um, get some of my pod to play games over spell table so I can just do a screen grab for it. Um, it's not my ideal way of recording, but it might be like a stopgap. I really want to get some gameplay footage going on this channel this year. Uh, but if you want to sling spells with me over on Spell Table or just nerd out about magic and anime and like video games and whatnot, consider joining the Discord. As always, there is a link in the description, as well as a link to the full deck list for uh, this deck and all my other decks, really, uh, over on Moxfield. But until next time, good luck with your builds.